A very good evening to you. You are watching Newsline Prime here on TV One. We are. We promised you yesterday when we went off that we will be bringing you an interesting guest, and indeed we have an interesting guest in the studio. UPFA parliamentarian Dr. Ramesh Patidana joins us this evening after a lapse of a long time. Uh, he last came, if I remember correctly, just before the political uh, turmoil, so to say, in the country on the October 26th political turmoil. Just before that, uh, Dr. Ramesh Patil came on the show and talk, spoke to us. Today he's here, after everything is solved, he's here to tell us what's going to happen in the political arena. Thank you very much, Doctor, for being here with us. Thank you, Shatranga, for inviting. It's good to be back, actually. Definitely. Let's get to the topic straight away, Doctor. Yes. Uh, now, uh, firstly, I want to ask you, today was a parliamentary, parliamentary day yes. sitting. Um, and several interesting points, facts came up in the parliament, especially with regard to the uh, appointment of the opposition leader in parliament. We saw uh, the leader of the house speaking about it. We saw the former opposition leader, uh, TNA parliamentarian, R. Sambandan speaking about it. Now, all in all, the speaker has taken a decision to appoint uh, Mahindra Rajpaks as the opposition leader of the country. Now, why is there this uh, sort of uh, debate and discussion about it afterwards? I think it's about basically about appointments uh, will be making to the Constitutional Council. So the opposition leader will get the position to appoint uh, some members to the, the Constitutional Council. Mm. That Constitutional Council is something very important for this country and for the you know for the appointment of the people to different commissions, including uh, to the the Supreme Court and also to the Appeal Court. So I think they have they are going to bargain on that it seems. But otherwise, it's very clear decision was given by the Speaker of the Parliament. So it should go to the UPFA. Mm. So it's clearly ours. That's why he had recognized twice Ahinda Rajapaksha as the opposition leader of this country. I think there is no reason, no grounds for the UNP and also the Tamil National Alliance to come back and argue on that. I think uh, Speaker had recognized that one. I think we have seen some of the members from the cabinet of that uh, the, the present government had acknowledged that, and also the JVP came forward to say that it's the correct thing to do. So I think it's very clear. The position is very clear, but. Uh, uh, from uh, from one side, UNP would have liked it very much if they had the support from the opposition, the the fake opposition we used to have from TNA. And also, on the other hand, uh, TNA is losing their grounds in the northern province because we, they had supported government. Now they have nothing to go back and tell the people of the northern part of this country. So they are fighting to uh, fighting for a comeback. If not, they try to show the people of the northern part of the country whom they represent that uh, they still have a stake in this. That's what's happening, but I don't think there will be anything reasonable on that argument. The main point that is raised uh, by these people in the government uh, right now and people who, but people like our Sambandan, is the fact that uh, former president, former prime minister, current opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksa uh, took off, uh, took the membership of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Permanent or the SLF, SLPP as we call it. Uh, now, that argument has not properly been countered. Yes, that, that statement is being made. But no one from your camp or the camp of, uh, of close confidence of uh, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa has come forward and said, uh, no, this is what has actually happened. What has actually happened? Has he taken membership of the SLPP? Uh, no, he has not taken membership of the, the, the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna. But all of us acknowledge the fact that, we agree with the fact that we are the, we were at the forefront of that campaign. We are the front runners of Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna. But it's a matter for, uh, between the, the party secretaries to solve whether we had actually taken the membership or not because that, that's a legal issue. But for the time being, now the, the general secretary of the UPFA had recognized the fact that we are still members of the United People's Freedom Alliance. Mm. But politically, yes, we have been working for the Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna. Mm. We were working um, to, to ensure that we win the local government elections. Uh, uh, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha is the de facto leader of Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna. There is nothing to hide about it. Politically, yes, we are with Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna. Even today, I state the fact that we are still working to ensure that we form the next government under our symbol uh, with Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna. So, politically, that's the truth. Who is going to be the candidate? No, that's, that's, you know, the time will decide. So, the moment uh, they, they declare that there will be a presidential election, so we will decide on the candidate. But before that, before the presidential election, the, the government have the responsibility to hold the election which is due. So they've been, they, they kept on postponing the local government election for more than three years. Now the, the provincial council elections are due. So we had, a, we had an adjournment debate in the parliament today. 
So we, we expect, we keep our fingers crossed that we will get a chance to face the provincial council elections before the, the, um, the presidential election, whatever it comes. So we are, we are ready to uh, face the election. You brought us uh, to an interesting point. Uh, people have been asking for elections, even the Mahana Ekateros uh, of the country, Aruna Ekateros of the country have been asking for an election. They have highlighted the importance of this provincial council elections. <coughs> now, various parties are saying that <coughs> the people, if they want, can take this matter up with the judiciary. Even uh, the chairman of the elections commission has uh, said something along those lines. If you want an election, why not, if it's being denied, as you claim, by the government, the United National Party government which is in power, why not go to the judiciary? No, we are looking at the different aspects. Now we are going to the, the, the judiciary as well. But, uh, you know, what the, what the underlying factor here is Chaturanga, we are one of the oldest democracy, democracies in Asia, but if not the oldest, one of the oldest democracies. So we have been holding elections quite frequently during last decade, especially during under under the leadership of uh, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha. So we are very proud of the fact that we managed to hold the, uh, the elections in northern part of the country after a long period of time. So, you know, the, even, even, the, no, even the story about the Eastern Provincial Council was the same. So the Muslim, of this, Muslim community of this country managed to have, own, have their own chief minister in their province. And the, the Tamils of this country, uh, you know, they, they had their own chief minister in the northern province of the country. So we, had all those, we held all those elections in this country. So every year we had n number of elections. Mm. So why are they so afraid? The unitary government that was formed in 2015, they kept on postponing the elections. So we, we believe in democratic institutions. We have local governments, we have provincial councils, we have the parliament, we have the executive presidency, which is um, you know, the, the person who had been elected by the popular vote of this country. So we have a vibrant democratic economy, a vibrant uh, democratic platform in this country. But why do people want to, why do people, those who govern this country, want to keep on postponing the elections? So they should ideally come forward and face the face the face the tune of how people of this country feel. It's, it doesn't mean that end of the at the at the end of the day they have to leave the government and go. Certain times you 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 tend to lose. So that's what happened in the local government elections. So we know they if UNP if they wanted to have a look at the the results of the local government elections, they can have some constructive methods to ensure that you know they are they they go as a more form, more formidable force. Uh, uh, to the people. So the, the elections are there to ensure that we correct ourselves so they can get to know. So by postponing elections, UNP is making a lot of mistakes. I think they are, you know, they are, they are furthering themselves from the masses of this country. Uh, Dr. Ramesh Patina, let's move aside from the political situation in the country and come back to the political situation to you personally. Uh, how was the wedding, uh, the recent wedding? No, it was good. You were there? Yeah, as well? Yes, we were invited. We went in there. Yes. there a lot of people, like that. There were a lot of people. Yes, uh, the the villagers from um, you know His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha's hometown. Mm -hmm. You know, so the the people who represented different political parties. Yeah. So all were invited. This so it was a function in uh, his hometown. When it comes to uh, when you take a look at uh, an event like a wedding. Uh, the, son, the, the younger son of the yes. Rajapaksa family is uh, when you are invited to the wedding, we someone would consider that as a privilege and an honor. But when it comes to the political situation, uh, when there was a shift in the government, when the government was ousted and the Mahindra Rajapaksa led government was formed, uh, where were you? Why were you not uh, in the list of maybe deputy ministers, ministers, state ministers? Where? Why wasn't your no, name spoken? At that time, you know, most of our colleagues. We want to sacrifice something for the betterment of this country. We were not after the portfolios. We said, look here, the, the political, the main political aim of ours was to get the elections. Mm. We were trying to get the general elections. So that's why uh, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha obtained that position. Mm. You know, uh, uh, President of this country requested uh, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksha to come forward and obtain that premiership. So it wasn't a coup as you know, some, some people are trying to portray. So, you know, he went in there, he assumed duties, but uh, as all of us know, we couldn't master that uh, magic number of 100, 113. Hmm. So, and on top of that, you know, as, as we said, we were working on the agenda of, you know, getting an election. Hmm. So, uh, President Maitripal Sarasen dissolved the parliament, which was, you know, subsequently denied by the, you know, court of law of this country. So, we bowed for that, we, we, accept, we acknowledged that decision, and Mahindra Rajapaksha resigned from his uh, premiership. So politically, we wanted to go for a election, 
And on the other hand, there was a popular request by the people of this country considering the economic and social situation. Mm. It was going haywire, mm. you know, what was happening in the economy. Mm. So the government was, uh, you know, that there's so much of corruption was ongoing. It was corruption was rampant. Economically, we were, we were going down the drain. So, so it was a social and political decision. Uh, that was the belief of the people of this country. So we went in there, but we couldn't master the number. So we, couldn't, we, we didn't want to hold on to that. So we, you know, gave it, gave it back and came, came back. So it doesn't mean that uh, politically we had, uh, you know, we have done a, done a mistake. At the end of the day, we have retained the legal ownership of the opposition. All this time we've been fighting for that. Now we have it. Uh, Dr. Padre, now I want to ask you this question as well. When you take a look at the UNP, when we uh, talk about the leadership of the United National Party, we know uh, Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singh as the leader has several people who are, uh, let's say, people who the general public would call uh, not so corrupted people. People would point fingers at people like Dr. Ha uh, Harsha De Silva, Iran Vikramaratna and say, these are people who can work. And then when you take a look at the UPFA and your party, we see people like uh, people who do not, uh, I don't want to name any names because uh, uh, people who do not even muster the support of the people who, who came into the parliament through the national list very close to former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. But then there are people like yourself who are also there. So why is there this disparity? Yes, you, you always point the finger at the UNP and uh, say this is what's happening. But if you take a look at your own party, people like you are being cornered. Am I right in mm, saying that? Not really cornered. It's the game with the people of this country actually. And I firmly believe in politics, peace stands for patience. Mm. So we have a long way to go. I was elected to the parliament. You asked you ask, ask personally about myself. So. Yes, so we started my political career in 2010. We were in the, uh, we, we were in the government of uh, of Honorable uh, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksha from 2010 to 2015. At that time, true, we were in the government, but that was a government with uh, uh, mem members of parliament of 160. It was numbering up to 160. So we were the the junior most people of that government. Then we had to be in the opposition. So now people have recognized that. I think uh, the leaders of the party they have also recognized our, our capacity. Our loyalty. So when the right time comes, we believe that we'll get the right, you know, we'll get the, the right opportunity. So it's a matter of time, you know. We, first, we have to we have to be uh, targeting of forming the government of ours. Or if not that, uh, you know, first we have to go for the presidential election. We have to ensure that our candidate wins the next presidential election. After that, we can go for the general election. Then surely we can win that election. So obviously, people of, people of this country will keep us at the necessary place. I think the leaders will have to recognize that. Definitely. Uh, doctor, let's go back to parliament and uh, the situation. We just spoke about the UNP government as well. The UNP government uh, need, uh, seems to be uh, pushing forward for a new constitution. Uh, various parties have various comments on that. And just by going with the comments made by the Mahanayaka Theras and the Anunayaka Theras of the country, various intellectual leaders, spiritual, religious leaders have come forward and said what the people would want is for their problems to be solved rather than new constitution being made. As a parliamentarian, as a person who has been, as you said, been in parliament from 2010 onwards, a person who has seen these political changes happening uh, in the very recent past, do you think there is a requirement for a new constitution at this moment or can it wait? Actually, my view is little different from uh, the, the, you know, some of the other members of our our, our group, mm -hmm. Chaturanga. I feel that there there had been a political problem in relation to Tamils of this country. Uh, that's why we had to bring in 13th Amendment to the Constitution. So it's not fully enacted in relation to land powers and the police powers. So they are not vested with the the provincial councils. So we 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 had experienced a 30-year-long civil war had torn the country, which had created so much of mayhem to this country. Yes. Even now, almost all the political parties say that, uh, almost all the Tamil political parties say that we need some more powers to be, you know, devolved to the, the provincial councils. You know, we have to fully implement that. That's what they say. I feel that our government also at times had mentioned the fact that, okay, we are going to go ahead with 13 plus, mm. probably, an, you know, probably an amendment to the, the current constitution probably to establish a Senate, upper house, and uh, you know, to, uh, for, the, for the Tamils to be given certain more powers. I personally think we should do that. If not a new constitution, we should bring in an amendment to ensure that we satisfy that community of this country. And I personally believe the, the, trouble, is, the, the, the trouble is not about 
the, the trouble with the Tamils of this country is not about economic development. It's not about uh, equal rights. It's not about uh, integration. I personally believe it's about uh, their, their ideology. Rightly or wrongly, they feel that they believe that they have right for self-determination. So that you have to address separately. And all the time, I think uh, since independence, there had been some distance between Sri Lankan state and the Tamil people of this country. They feel that they are not part of state. They feel that they are not under state. So, so there had been some alienation between Sri Lankan state and the Tamils of this country. Which is wrong. Yeah, which is wrong. But on, on the other hand, we should extend our friendly hand as the majority of this country. Hmm. The government of this country should extend our friendly hand. And we must ensure that we send the correct message across to the Tamils, Tamils of this country. Look here, this is your government. We are one country, one nation. For that, we are, we are willing to go a mile. So we are, we, are, we are willing to go forward to ensure that we give something satis to, to satisfy you. So in that case, I think if it's not a new constitution, we need to have some amendments to the existing constitution to ensure that we live happily in this country. And at the same time, we ensure that we recognize some of the grievances of the Tamils of this country, which is not the popular, which is not the popular slogan in uh, you know this part of the country, especially with our camp. Uh, interesting comments, uh, Dr. Pasadena, but uh, we have to also recognize the fact that uh, the Tamil politicians who are from the north, who have promised to work for the people of the north uh, and the east, uh, for the Tamil population, the populace of the country have failed to fulfill that service to the Tamil people. They have been worrying about making the 19th Amendment to the Constitution and that 19th Amendment has created many problems. Almost uh, every politician, parliamentarian who speaks up out in Parliament have brought up the 19th Constitutional Amendment at some point in their speeches. So again, the Tamil politicians also have uh, a right to work for the Tamil yes. people. Of course, yes. The politicians of you know both these uh, communities North and South, they have used this problem for their political leverage. So, as much as you know, as much as we try to do something, at the same time, we'll have to ensure that Tamil politicians of this country also look into the grievance of the Tamil pe people more closely. We saw during last, uh, you know, we, uh, last uh, last weeks, and there was this uh, the floods and that uh, you know that destruction in that in that side that part of the country. They did not come forward to help the people of the country. And on the other hand, we saw the Provincial Council of the Northern Part did not spend, it, they, had, they had spent only 30% of the monies for the capital expenditure which were given from the central government. So the message that is delivered to the people of that uh, area is, look here the central government is not sending funds for the, uh, uh, sufficient funds for the capital uh, infrastructure, capital development, uh, infrastructure development, capital expenditure. So what they, that, what they try to do is basically again to alienate themselves from the central government. They are trying to create that myth among the Tamil people. Central government is not doing justice to the Tamils of this country. So they have a bigger stake, you know, as much as we have a significant role to, pay, uh, role to play. Tamil politicians of this country also have a significant stake in relation to solving this trouble. When it, uh, let's come back to Colombo. Let's uh, talk about the situation in Colombo. Uh, yesterday too, uh, we had uh, JVP uh, provincial councillor, former provincial councillor, wasn't some singer here with us talking about uh, the level of corruption. Now a COPE committee report has been uh, put out. Uh, 17 institutions have been looked into. Uh, the losses alone uh, could surpass us basically values that we, we are hearing values that we even we can't believe. When you say for the first nine months of 2018, Sri Lankan Airlines has incurred losses 40 billion, 40 billion rupees. When you say the CEB has earned losses in 2018 to the tune of 26 billion rupees. And we are finding it on one hand, we had to repay the debts obtained as they claim by your government back in the day. Um, when we are trying to repay these loans in one hand, when the cost of living is increasing and when there's a Sena caterpillar infestation in the country and all of these things once again at the end of the day burdens the general public, people watching from home. Uh, do the politicians actually feel the depth of what is going on in the country? Because we do. Actually, we actually the whole country feels, it seems. You know, from one side, you know, that loss-making institutions. You know, you, you need to really revisit these scenarios and see whether we need to carry forward these burdens like for instance Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lankan Airlines. The, the popular argument is even though the airline is making losses, 
it is in, you know it's it's providing so much of strength to the Sri Lankan tourism industry. Hmm. We have to we have to see the pros and cons. See if we cannot continue. You know, 40, 40 billion Sri Lankan rupees for a nine nine month period is a staggering amount. So we really the economy should get together and see all this time we were talking about this national career, but we have to we have to think twice whether we can carry forward this you know operation any any longer. So the the, the you know the, we we at the other side of the story is that there are about some 190 officials of the Sri Lankan Air who are who are drawing more than 1 million Sri Lankan rupees per month. Hmm. So this, there are staggering amounts that they are getting as salaries in a loss making institution. So on the other hand, see when it comes to the, 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 the electricity board, it's a you know different ball game altogether. At whatever the cost you have to provide that. Mm. In, in certain months, in certain years, when there's rainfall, you can generate more hydropower, and also uh, the, the, the cost of electricity comes down. Mm. But we have to have a overall plan to ensure that we provide electricity at a lower cost. Now the government is duty bound to provide electricity to the people at a decent cost. And the industry needs need that electricity at a lower cost. People need electricity at a lower cost. But Sri Lanka at the moment does not have a plan. Mm. So it's thanks to the whatever said and done about, done about whatever said and done about this Norachole coal power plant project. It's because of Norachole plant that we have this 24-hour uninterrupted power supply today mm. at a decent cost. So what happened to Sampur now? So this government, you know, they did not do anything sufficient to ensure that the Sri Lankan people have uninterrupted power supply yes we have it now but on continuous basis after another five years ten years down the line at a decent cost so where is that mega you know where is that plan for the for the, for the mega development projects and also to provide these uh, common amenities to the people uh, doctor when you say the government didn't have a plan the government actually put forward the long time long term generation plan back in 2015 uh, again uh, we see the point now. My question to you is different. I'm, I'm not saying the government has done things. I'm saying, what have you all done as the opposition when the government says we have put forward a long term generation plan in 2015 and from 2015 onwards, 2018, they have failed to enact a single thing when it comes to actually creating low cost power plants in the country? What have you all been doing as the opposition without raising the finger? No, no, that we have been raising that voice inside parliament and also outside parliament. We, people have been listening to that, but there nothing nothing much apart from you know raising you know the the, the raising our voice mm. you know you're bringing that to the notice of the people apart from that you know what could we do as the opposition so we had been you know in relation to different issues say the bond scam or the other issues in relation to other corrupt activities of the government we have gone to the gone to different places mm. whether they worked or not it's a different matter but at the end of the day people had uh, you know you know they had received the message that's why they delivered the verdict in 2018 uh, local government elections so if what we can do is, as you correctly say, there is a, there is a there is some trouble from our side. The, the trouble is we have to put forward a correct plan. We have to show the people of this country, look here, this is the alternate plan. When we come back to power in 2020, we are going to do that. So in relation to that, we are little behind. I, you, I, I, I acknowledge that. You 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 brought us to an interesting point. You said there is small trouble from your end. Is that a deal between Mahindra Rajpaks and Rani Vikramasinghe? Is that the trouble in your side? Hundred percent not. Hundred percent not. There no no deal at all it's very clear if there was a deal you know that the, the UNPS also said that there was a coup and the Rajapaksha went and obtained that premiership uh, in, in October 2018 there was nothing like that so it's very clear but in political field you know you know there, there could be you know you have some friends in the political field it's they've been in the parliament for a long period of time we know each other say it's it's not about that but uh, as you as I say but we don't have, a, we, we have to show the people of this country, we have a strong plan B to uh, not only about the, the electricity generation, but also about healthcare, education, infrastructure development, and more importantly, the economic development. We have a plan, we have to, okay, we have been discussing about them behind the scenes, but we have to show the people uh, without being delayed. So we have to show the people of this country, we have a separate plan to develop this country economically and to establish the, 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 the social phenomena. Uh, Dr. Ramesh uh, Patil, in a final few minutes of our show, I want to uh, drag your attention uh, back to, uh, we, we touched upon this uh, issue just before uh, as well. There is a major incident with regard to the agriculture sector of our country, uh, the fall army worm menace. Uh, you are from down south. We know for a certain uh, factor of your district has also been affected. There were several incidents reported from your um, uh, this thing as well. 
Now, my question to you is very, uh, very straightforward. We know the Agriculture Minister and the Department of Agriculture are doing certain things uh, to curtail this issue. But uh, you're a person who has, uh, who has a vast knowledge when it comes to uh, medicinals. You're a doctor by uh, profession before you started all of this. I want to ask you why you came into politics as well. But let's not go there. But my question to you is, uh, there are things that the government can do when it comes to uh, genetically modified uh, solutions to this, because that was done in the United States. If a matter like this uh, is in your control, or you had the opportunity to actually present something to the government, do you, as a person coming from down south, have a plan that we maybe we can uh, solve this issue? Because I'm asking because you're also from the down south, and Gold District is also affected by the fall army movement. Yes, so the, the management should be a multifaceted one, it seems. So while some, some of the people, agricultural, you know, the, the experts in the agricultural field say that, some of them say that you have to uh, resort to the organic means, mm. like, you know, using some of the organic stuff in relation to, you know, in relation to controlling the, the yeah, controlling this, uh, uh, this guy. And on, in relation to uh, some of the experts, they believe that it has to be the chemical method. Mm. So it has to be the amalgamation of both, you know, the, the indigenous and the local and organic methods. And also on the, on the other hand, from uh, the, the, uh, the chemicals, insecticides and pe pesticides that we use. So that in, in combination with the, the expert knowledge only you can curtail that one, but at the same time it had become a mandatory requirement that you destroy some of the crops unfortunately. Mm. That's a view of the, the specialist. Yeah. So unless you control by such means, it's going to be a bit of a concern. But here the, the second question comes, the, we ask farmers to destroy their crops, but are we compensating them enough? So it's the amount government had declared is 40,000 40, Sri Lankan rupees per acre, which is not sufficient. So the cost, most of the, most of the farmers say the cost of their, you know, the managing that field for a period of time and the, the, ex, uh, the expected uh, revenue would be something like 100,000 rupees. So government has to be realistic, okay, they can ask the farmers to destroy their crops, but at the same time, they must be reasonable in paying compensation. They should be paying at least 100,000 rupees per acre. So the management wise, it has to be a multifaceted approach, as most of the experts uh, point out. Uh, doctor, final question, uh, when it comes to uh, this situation in the country. Now, you all say a provincial council election should be held. Uh, the United National Party says, yes, maybe a provincial council election, but a presidential council election as well. Um, some people, like I mentioned earlier, would want someone to go to the judiciary, go to the Supreme Court and ask uh, that the elections be held. A uh, lot of things happening going on. There is no clear direction to the general public. As I mentioned, the general public are battered by a plethora of other issues. Uh, when all of this is going on, we see countries like United States moving in and doing certain things here. We also see the presence of China. We also see the presence of India. So all these international countries are also coming around us. So what are we to understand with all of this? You are a person in the political field. You are a person in parliament. What is happening to our country? No, historically Sri Lanka had been, uh, you know, center point in relation to geopolitical issues. So we are at a particular, you know, geopolitical location, mm. which is important for China and also to India and also to uh, United States of America. So I think uh, these issues, these, uh, the international issues were there since independence. I think Mrs. Pandar Naik, a former prime minister of this country, had managed it exceptionally well. You know, she had that she had formed, she had initiated, you know, the formation of this non-aligned movement, yes. and she had been chairman of that, and she had been good with, you know, all sides, left mm -hmm. of centre and left of right. So she had been managing, you know, the foreign affairs at her level best. Mm -hmm. so you were friends, you were, you were friendly with India, you were managing China very well, and at the, at the same time, you were good with West. Mm -hmm. So I think current politicians can take a lot of examples from her her governance. She she has had a very decent middle path in relation to all these issues. So, no wonder after 30, 40 years, we see the same scenario, you know, uh, developing. Or, so, uh, we, see, we, see the, we, we have a, we can see the revisiting of the same scenario in relation to Sri Lankan situation. So, it's nothing new. Historically, it had been like that, but it's the, it's, it's up to the leaders of this country and also the diplomats to ensure that we manage them smoothly should we so it's, worry? Uh, should, should we worry? i don't think i don't think there's anything to worry about it um, there there could be political slogans in relation to these issues but i don't think but uh, we see in the recent past there had been you know slight favoration toward you know chinese because we were getting a lot of donations from them so it's quite natural and on the other side when we see this unp government when they came into power they were 
you know sliding little more towards uh, you know the west and the us but i think you know both ways so best way is the middle path and i hope that the the leader of this country those who are managing the international affairs the diplomats take the middle path like what mrs bandarnag had done in 1970s that's the best way out thank you dr ramesh patel for joining us this evening on newsline and talking to us uh, so candidly about uh, matters pertaining to the political developments in the country and matters pertaining to dr ramesh patel's personal political life as well we hope to hear and see you uh, soon on uh, many more of our programs uh, lined up for our public to be updated about the current developments in the country thank you very much for watching we'll join you monday morning we hope farah shaukat ali who has been slightly not well is back now uh, we hope that he'll see you on monday if not we will have an interesting host an interesting guest lined up for you on monday morning as well thank you very much for watching take care